Hey guys, this is Jim, WT1W, and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. So some of you know, many of you know, that I bought a Flex radio several, several months ago. I bought a Flex 6300, and I loved it. It was a great radio. And then I finally decided to pull the trigger and buy a new one. And I sold the Flex 6300. Andy, thank you. So I've had a 6600 now for a couple of months, something like that. And I really enjoy the radio. It's a great radio. It has a lot of features that are not available in a standard size radio. It's all computer controlled. Um, you cannot run the radio without a PC of some sort to drive it. And that software works on either Mac or Windows. The Mac version is a separate product from a third party vendor that's also called Smart SDR. But Flex does provide Smart SDR with the radio for free as a download from Flex Radio. One of the cool things about Flex Radios is there's a lot of integration between all of it. It's very tightly integrated, and that's one of the features that makes Flex such a cool option for an amateur radio station. It can all be managed remotely over the network to some extent. We'll talk about that in a minute. Recently, a friend of mine in the Toads Discord decided he was gonna sell his Flex setup, and he was selling the Flex Tuner and the Flex Amp referred to as the TGXL and the PGXL, uh, respectively. So it was a super great price. I couldn't pass it up, so I pulled the trigger and I bought his flex tuner and amp from him. So in the last week or so, I've been getting all that set up. I've done a lot of phone QSOs and a lot of FT8 QSOs, utilizing all three of the flex products I have simultaneously. And so what I wanted to kind of share with you guys today was some of the integration on the back of the Flex gear. The gear will work with uh, any old radio. It doesn't have to be a Flex radio, but when you go with an all Flex ecosystem in your ham shack, then you get this super tight integration. So the first thing I wanna share is let's take a look at the back of the TGXL and PGXL devices and what they look like and the functions on them. Is the Flex radio power genius? So this is a view of the front of the tuner, uh, excuse me, the amp itself, the PGXL Power Genius. And you have this beautiful LCD display on here. It tells you the status of the tuner, or excuse me again, the amp. It shows you your SWR, how much current, fan speed, temperatures, all of that, as well as your network connectivity um, options. And it's pretty simple. It has a physical button on the front. You can push that to go from standby to operate, but that's not really cool integration. We'll get to that in a second. The back of the amp is fairly straightforward. It looks very similar to a lot of other amplifiers you've seen. Flex provides this to run on 110 or 220 volts. I'm running mine on 110. I don't have a 220 connection back here in my shack. So for now, according to Flex, I am limited to about half power. I'm not gonna get 1500 watts on a 110 circuit. And for me, for now, that's fine. Down the road, I may get crazy and put in a 220. So on the back of the amplifier, we have two separate inputs and outputs, A and B, and those are pretty straightforward. These pre-distortion outputs are not used with the flex radio, but they are available to use with radios that support adaptive pre-distortion, such as something like an Anon. On the bottom of the amplifier here at the back, you can see, let me make sure I'm showing the right picture. Yep. On the back of the amplifier here at the bottom, you can see some other connections. And these are the standard connections you'd use with another radio tuner setup. So you have uh, cat control and PTT buttons, just like you would have on a standard, on a standard amplifier. Um, this will allow you to do ALC and cat control and so on and so forth. With the Flex ecosystem, the only port we're using down here is going to be our LAN port. That is all that the Flex amplifier needs from the radio is a network connection. If we look over here at the tuner, you can see what the front of the tuner looks like. This is a 10 to 1 tuner. We have manual controls we can use on the front of it, similar to what we find on the amplifier. These are not required. Again, all this can be completely controlled from software on a computer connected over the network to the device. So you can manually adjust your tuning just like you would on, on any tuner such as an LDG or an MFJ. 
You can adjust your capacitance and inductance separately if you need to, to tweak it. Obviously, this is an auto tuner. The tuner itself is rated to 2000 watts. The amplifier output is 1500 watts. And on the front of the tuner, as you can see here, we have a nice color LCD dis display, and it shows us the status of our two inputs and outputs, A and B, just like the amplifier. And our manual settings down here for our capacitance and inductance settings, what the tuner comes up with, and then of course we can adjust these manually as well. And of course then the firmware versions and the IP address that it's picked up on your network. And if we take a look at the back, the connections mirror what you see on the PGXL, an A and a B, ports for uh, standard PTT and CAT control for this tuner. So this will work in combination with many other radios other than Flex. Again, the port that we're interested in here is the LAN port. On the tuner, it says 15 volts DC. You can get an external power adapter, or you can run this off your existing uh, 12 volt ham power supply works fine. That's how I'm running it right now. So that is a quick look at the front and the back of the tuner and the amplifier. All right. So on this screen now, what we're looking at here is going to be all the flex radio applications all connected and interop at one time. The first thing we have to look at is, of course, smart SDR. That's the main application that drives the radio and integrates with all the other pieces of software. The main functions, and let me scooch this guy aside here. This is Smart SDR DAX, which stands for Digital Audio Interface, I think. And what this gives you on the Flex Radio is virtual audio connections, um, similar to something like um, virtual audio cable. So this is the interface between the sound requirements of something like WSJTX and the flex radio. Because this is a 6600, it has four slices available. I can run four separate audio streams at one time. And DAX is the piece that glues all those together. Right now, I only have one slice running and one instance. So we're actually only using uh, the first DAX instance. And as you can see, we have four RX streams here. And this adds all those ports to Windows the Mac version, of course, works similarly. So that is the Smart SDR DAX, Digital Audio Interface. The other piece that's critical to operation with legacy style applications is Smart SDR CAT. And the CAT control that Smart SDR provides gives you two options to manage devices over the network or over a serial port. So Flex will provide virtual serial ports, uh, and as well as that, you can also have network connections. So your CAT control from something like WSJTX works just like it's made in WSJTX. No special thing required other than this program running so we can glue everything together with the Flex ecosystem. So in conjunction with that in Smart SDR DAX, this program here, WSJTX works perfectly fine, just like it would over a USB cable with something like an ICOM 7300 or a FT9 or a Yaesu 991A. I've talked about Smart SDR before, and when I originally did a video on it, I didn't have all these pieces figured out completely, and I didn't have the tuner and the amp. So since I've added the tuner and the amp, I was able to go to Flex Radio and download two other programs for the tuner and the amp respectively. So this is Tuner Genius XL and let me uh and so what TGXL Tuner Genius XL gives us is complete control via our computer of the tuner that may or may not be located here. One of the big selling points with Flex Radio is that it is really 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 designed to be used remotely. I don't have to have all the gear sitting next to me like I do here in my shack. I can put it out in my shop, for example, and drive everything from in here. Short of physically flicking power switches, that's all I got to do. And there's ways to get around having to physically flick a power switch. So TGXL lets me drive the tuner. And this shows me the data from what's happening as I'm using the program. I can initiate a manual tune. I can put the tuner in bypass mode or standby mode. It has, as I showed you, two inputs, 
uh, and two outputs respectively. This is my current, this is my flex radio and the second one, the B one is not being used. So my flex is called the signal because you can't stop the signal. And it shows what the current settings are for it and that it's in the operate mode. These are independent. So if I have a separate antenna, I could come down here and put it in bypass mode or operate mode as required. I have nothing hooked up to B, so it's not even gonna work for me right now. These are the knobs that are on the front of the tuner that I showed you earlier in the picture. And these let me adjust capacitance and inductance individually and separately. Or I can initiate an auto tune. And there you go. And then it shows you the values that were selected. Down here is the firmware version and of course then the IP address. All right, let's take a quick look at the PGXL program. So this again is very similar in operation to the way the tuner program works. I can modify the settings on it remotely from this application. I can put the tuner in, or the, excuse me, the amplifier in standby mode or operate mode all from here. If it's in operate mode, it shows me my output power, my SWR and my input drive power. And these two programs to use the tuner and the amp need to be running on your computer. You're gonna put the internal tuner on, this particular Flex has an internal tuner. It's a three to one tuner. It's gonna be in bypass, which we can see up here on the screen that the tuner is in bypass mode right here. That means the internal tuner is not gonna do anything. It's in bypass mode. When it's in bypass mode, of course, then all our tuning is handled from the PGXL and I can tune the radio from here. And as you see, that kicks on the tuner down there. This is because I have Tuner Genius XL installed and the radio at one IP address is talking to that tuner, all that over my network, telling it what to do. Now there is obviously RF cables between the radio, the tuner and the amplifier. That's not gonna go away. We're not sending RF over the LAN as data packets. This is not a VoIP application. The other thing that happens when we install Power Genius XL program and we're using it, Smart SDR sees it, and now I get this extra tab over here. So I honestly don't need to have the TGXL and the PGXL program up where I can see them because I can see all that kind of data. Let's move these guys out of the way because I can see all that same information right here in the main Smart SDR app. So I have the status of my amplifier and I have the status of the tuner, and this will change dynamically based on what the amplifier is set at. So that is the basic integration. Now, one thing I have found that I think is a, a little bit of a fail on Flex's part, the amplifier has no way to come on remotely. There is no partial on setting where I can initiate the amplifier coming fully on over the network by talking to it with the smart SDR software. The amplifier has a physical switch you flip, and that's regardless of 220 or 110 power input for the amplifier. To completely automate the amplifier, you're gonna to have to get something like a relay switch that can handle the 120 or 240 voltage to do that. As far as I know, at this time, there is no such thing as a smart plug that will handle 220 volts. There may be, I just never have looked. Radio and the tuner both run off of 12 volt power supply like you use for your radio today. The way I have mine set up is that my power supply, which is an Astron linear power supply, is on an Amazon smart plug, and I just tell the Amazon device to turn on the power supply, and that puts the juice to the radio and the tuner. Right now on the amplifier, like a barbarian, I have to reach around and flick the switch on it. So if you think you're gonna operate remote, you kinda have to leave the amp on at least until I get an automated solution for it where I can turn it on and off remotely. If I check the weather and I see that it's not gonna be storms today, I tend to leave it on so I can play with it from, from a remote location that I have to sit at nine hours a day to get a paycheck Monday through Friday. Everything else works fairly well with your standard smart plugs. The one little other gotcha in this equation of integration is that the radio itself, the 6600, 
requires soft on and off. So while you can apply power to the radio, there's still a connection to do a normal startup and a normal shutdown, similar to like you would do with a computer. Flex does not recommend that you hard power on and hard power off the 6600 by just cutting the power because that could damage the SD card, which is basically the, where the operating system of the flex radio lives. In my opinion, and it's my opinion, that's a bit of a fail. They should have done it in firmware, but they didn't. So flex provides a remote on connector on the back of the actual radio itself. And you can hook that up with a smart relay, which I've done one complaint. It would be what I just described is that there's not complete tight integration with remote power on and power off. It does require some third party solutions. If flex would come out with a dingus, I think that could be handled through one device and it would make a complete solution for absolutely remoting it at a location. If you've ever seen Mike Walker from Flex Radio, VA3MW, he's done several videos that are on the Flex Radio channel, and you should go check that out, that talk about his remote station. And I don't remember the specifics off the top of my head, but Michael has a complete remote setup where he can basically turn everything on and off remotely. I don't remember if he has an amplifier, but he has a device to power cycle his router, to power cycle the radio, obviously, tuner, everything, and it's all in a box stuck on a pole out in the wilds of Canada somewhere. Uh, so the beauty of that for Michael is that he has like a noise floor of zero, and that's where the tuner and the antenna sit, and Mike accesses it from his house in the city. I don't know that my plans are ever going to include a completely remote radio station out in the wilds of nowhere. I live in the county here, so I already have a fairly low noise floor most of the time. The network piece is the last piece I did want to mention before we close on this video. The radio, the tuner, and the amplifier all require a network connection for you to use with the software. You cannot hook up the Flex Radio via USB to your computer. A network connection to the devices are required for you to use the Flex Radio. Since each device has a network jack on it, all three have to be connected to the same local area network to work. If you don't have enough wired connections on your router, um, there are multiple ways you can use it without that. They have to be on a LAN. So you can buy a small network switch from Amazon or Office Depot or Best Buy, wherever, and plug all three devices into that switch and your computer into that same network switch you need four ports at least, computer, tuner, radio, amplifier, if you have all the gear. And that will let you run your flex from that computer on its own little baby LAN that may or may not be connected to your house network. Now, I have my house is wired, and I actually have an existing local area network within the house. So everything here is plugged in that. Guys, that about covers it for this video. I just wanted to share the integration that Flex Radio has and share my journey with Flex Radio. I think it's a very excellent system and I highly recommend it. Again, not paid for by Flex. I haven't even gotten a baseball cap from Flex. Guys, that's all I've got for today. Have a good one, 73.